And we have seen growing evidence that the dangers to our country can come not only across borders, but from violence that gathers within. There is little cultural overlap between violent extremists abroad and violent extremists at home. But in their disdainful pluralism, in their disregard for human life, in their determination to defile national symbols, they are children of the same foul spirit, and it is our continuing duty to confront them. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I wanted to do a two-part series this week about the ties between liberalism and Satanism and conservatism and Christianity, respectively, while we're still in the wake of the new uh, Texas abortion laws and the resultant meltdowns from the fluoride stare women who don't even live in Texas, learning that they won't be able to sacrifice their children at the altar of self-worship here in the Lone Star State anymore. But then I found something that I wanted to use for the intro of that video, and it's going to require a lot of editing that I just would not have had time for because it's like an audio recording, and it would just be better if it were substantiated with evidence from contemporary American culture, like displayed on screen, even though everyone, you know, if you hear it, you'll understand why it's been totally vindicated. I don't know. I just get very particular about these things. Okay. So we're going to delay that until next week. And then this makes more sense too right now, since we just had the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and I've got some pretty good takes on that. So we'll just get those out now and then we'll do the two part series next week. Very epic. But when I talk about 9-11, I acknowledge that I probably sound pretty calloused. I don't mean to, I would imagine that's because I was like, two years old at the time. I don't think anyone who either doesn't remember 9-11 or who wasn't alive for it can really understand the impact that it had on the country emotionally. So I would say to give me the benefit of the doubt, just keep in mind that, you know, just because I'm not joining in with everyone else talking about how we can never forget how we were attacked because of our freedoms, you know, that doesn't mean that I don't understand how horrific that day was. It's just that I can't help but be honest about how I look at it 20 years later. So I will read to you the bullet points that I posted on Instagram about 9-11. You know, I used to be able to do this on Twitter, but then I got kicked off for advocating for participation in the democratic process, like a good little civic process enthusiast. So now I have to do this on Instagram. So you should definitely follow me because I post pretty good content over there too. But anyways, I said... The biggest takeaways from post-9-11 America are that, one, the peak of our post-war unity required a terrorist attack in New York City, and we'll never achieve anything even remotely close to that degree of unity again, even if something similar happened now. Two, the legal infrastructure established by the system to get the guys who hate you because you're free, that's the NSA, DHS, Patriot Act, etc. Now that's going to be weaponized against you by the system because they hate you, which is why you're not actually free. And three, the American right used the greatest wave of patriotism and political support in the last hundred years to, checks notes, let a bunch of our people die in the sand for hair heroin trafficking and arms contracts. Meanwhile, our country has irreparably devolved into a glorified theme park. Where's the lie? Where is it? Hey, hey, the lie must be like a WMD in Iraq. Am I right? Because it's not there. No, not edgy enough. Uh, is it like Larry Silverstein, the owner of the World Trade Center complex who had breakfast every morning at the top of the North Tower, except coincidentally on September 11th when he had a doctor's appointment? Because it's not there. Is it my channel when I explain why that's funny? Because it's not there. The point being that in almost three years now of political commentary, I have only missed once, arguably twice. That bracket of takes pertaining to post 9-11 America is completely accurate. Let us discuss why. Firstly, the unity factor. You can go back and watch the archives, how they used to dub Bush speeches over rock songs on radio stations, how Disney would have all the sitcom stars talking about how much they loved America in between uh, segments of the shows and these little montages. That was the highest degree of unity that any of us had ever seen in our lifetimes and probably will ever see again. And now that's just completely gone. And in general, the trends show that our unity as a country has been dissolving for decades. Like you can look at, for example, the trust levels between 1972 and 2012, dropping from 46 to 32%, about half the country saying they trust their countrymen to about a third in 2012. And still, that was nine years ago. That was before Black Lives Matter went mainstream, before gender theory went mainstream, before cancel culture, before Antifa. So just imagine where it's at now. I would guess something like 20%. That is not sustainable for a country. And we'd been declining for a while because of many different factors, namely mass immigration from the third world and the post-industrial restructuring of the economy. But the point is that to get to a state 
where you could come together with your neighbor and say that you were proud to be an American, to wave the flag, to actually be unified as a country, that required, as we said, a terrorist attack in New York City, and that unity is never coming back. Even if something like that happened again, it just isn't because the people in this country are too nihilistic. I remember sitting in a classroom at my high school when the Parkland shooting was occurring, and I was following the coverage on Twitter, and you literally could not navigate through it without seeing all the memes that people were making about the shooting, which isn't to say that you can't joke about things like that, but it's just that the people in this country are not serious people anymore. Like we largely have no honor. We largely have no purpose. And if something like 9-11 happened again, there would be no unity. No, instead there would be an orchestrated consolidation of animosity against American patriots. And they would have the explanation for that all worked out in the media by the establishment in this country to serve their ends at your expense. And my evidence for this is the second point, which is that when 9-11 happened, we established things like updated surveillance systems in the NSA. We established the Department of Homeland Security. We had the Patriot Act. We had all of that. And now that is all being weaponized again against American patriots because they're simply defining you as a domestic terrorist. The government is legitimate. Everything that they do is legitimate. Everything that they tell you is true. And if you disagree, you are a threat to them, which makes you a terrorist by definition, which enables them to weaponize that post 9-11 infrastructure against you, despite the fact that it was supposedly created to defend you or whatever, which by the way, I promise you is going to happen provided that things don't change. Why would it not? As we saw in the beginning, George Bush literally took time out of his address to compare Trump supporters to the 9-11 terrorists. He literally said they're cut from the same cloth. Can you find me a history book where one of the most powerful members of the ruling class with the support and agreement and endorsement of the media or its contextual equivalent says something like that, says that a subset of the people over whom they govern are equivalent to the perpetrators of the deadliest attack on their soil in recorded history, and they've established the necessary legal infrastructure to go after those people, and it's because they took some silly photographs and broke some windows, or the contextual equivalent being equally insignificant and inconsequential and then, in the immediately succeeding chapter of this history book, everything just goes back to normal. But then it all went back to normal. Everyone just forgot about it, and they moved on. No, it doesn't compute. These people hate you because you love the country that they're trying to destroy. It's, it's really that simple. And that's why the third point especially resonates with me, which was that the American right used the greatest wave of patriotism and political support of the last hundred years, and that's probably generous, but still, to check notes, let a bunch of our people die in the sand for heroin trafficking and arms contracts. Meanwhile, our country has irreparably devolved into a glorified theme park. I really believe that. And the moment that occurred to me was actually last spring. I think I was in this downtown area and there were lots of really nice shops and restaurants. And this area actually used to be like a nice area, you know, pretty safe area. People would bring their families there all the time, et cetera. And I'm looking at the people who are there now and they're all from the third world. Like they're all wearing the traditional clothing from the countries to which they actually pledge allegiance. They're all speaking the languages of the countries from which they originate. And I'm watching them, you know, they're littering, they're letting their kids run around, knocking stuff over, screaming. And they're all standing in line outside of these designer stores. They're all standing outside of Tiffany's and Louis Vuitton and Gucci, but none of them are coming out with anything. Like they are literally just waiting in line to go into the store for the experience. So I asked one of the employees, hey, does anyone actually buy anything down here anymore? She goes, no, people don't come down here to shop anymore. And so all of our sales are just happening online. And that's when it clicked for me. Like, oh, this country is literally just a glorified theme park. Nobody has any respect for it. Nobody has any knowledge of how to create something like this or knowledge of the brilliance and sacrifice that went into making something like this. They just show up and get whatever they can out of it. And these people send their kids to American schools and they vote and over time, the ideas get more popular in the mainstream that America is evil and depressive. We're colonizers, as if giving them access to the greatest societal amenities and systems ever created in the history of the planet for nothing in return, except for maybe like a potential reduction in our weird pseudo-masochistic guilt was really such a disservice to them. It's a theme park. And maybe it's been a theme park for a while, but at least it used to be a cool theme park, right? At least we used to have like Captain America for a mascot. Who's our mascot now? What mascot could best represent the United States of America in 2021? Probably like transgender George Floyd with dementia. Or actually, no, just Captain America, but gay now. That's our mascot. And we've got bright lights, we've got entertainment, we've got corn syrup and pesticides and phytoestrogens. You don't even have to pay for parking. Just a per mile tax on the way here, right? Dude, we could have reversed all of that. George Bush literally had the highest approval rating in recorded history. His word was gospel and we did nothing with it because he's complicit in all of this and also very stupid. I am unironically of the opinion that if Buchanan had won in 92 and if Norm MacDonald, may he rest in peace, hosted The Daily Show or one of its equivalents, this country would be on the right track. I really believe the potential of those two men was that great. But that didn't work out, so we had to put our faith in people like George Bush. And we will discuss that speech excerpt momentarily along with a few other points on this topic. But first, we actually have some good news. It just keeps flowing, which is that we have yet another fantastic addition to the Heck Off Commie sponsor roster. Can you tell that I want you to be armed yet? Is it obvious? Here's the thing. If you're a gun owner, 
you know that whether you're at the range or carrying a pistol in your everyday life, one aggravation is always having the right mag carriers on hand depending on what firearm you're using that day because as you know, you gotta change it up. Variety is the spice of life. Sometimes you wanna be on the news talking about how you use the P365 to kill the bad guy. Other days you might wanna talk about how you use the XD45 to kill the bad guy. It all gets very confusing. Well, what if I told you that a company fixed that problem so that you can easily carry everything from nine millimeter to 45 ACP? It is so true. Introducing the universal mag carrier from Pitbull Tactical. Their proprietary design works with either single or double stack magazines. It's ambidextrous. It fits inside or outside the waistband or on any one and a half inch belt, but it gets better. You might be thinking to yourself, yeah, well that sounds good enough, but it's probably manufactured outside of the United States of America. It probably doesn't come with a 100% money back guarantee. Well, you would be mistaken because Pitbull's universal mag carrier is in fact made in the USA and it does in fact come with a 100% money back guarantee. So go to pitbulltactical.com, use the offer code DOYLE for a special introductory offer. Buy one, get the second for half price plus free shipping. This is the last mag carrier you will ever need, which is why they're guaranteed for life. That's pitbulltactical.com, pitbulltactical.com, offer code DOYLE, very epic. But anyways, I wanna add this point to what we were talking about earlier. Here's how I really know that no unity is possible. This is the most obvious indicator to me. Trump supporters, AKA anyone to the right of Hillary Clinton, are being called domestic terrorists and they are literally comparing January 6th to 9-11. They're styling it as 1-6 precisely for that reason because in their minds, it's just like 9-11. In fact, many of them are saying it's even worse than 9-11, that it was an even worse day for America than 9-11 because it was an attack on our democracy from within. These people should be put in jail. I mean, literally, they should be put in jail. I think the definition of treason, which is not constitutionally protected speech as outlined by our founding fathers, I think it should be expanded to include anyone who at any point has compared January 6th to 9-11 in a serious manner because it's treasonous. It incites violence against conservatives as we've seen countless times. And I think these people should be put in prison for exactly 2,977 days. Oh, but John, that's not what America's about. You're right. I forgot. Let's keep doing it your way. Oh, hey, theme park entrance is right up ahead, right? If we use the governments against our political opposition, how are we better than the left? That's not even what I'm saying. If I wanted to target my political opposition with the power of the state, I would just have my DOJ crack down on child pornography to achieve the same effect. The point, hyperbolic as it may be, is that a serious country would not grant influence to people who say things like that. And people have always said stupid things. But this is different. This isn't just... Ha, what if an elephant was blue? It's not even, ha, I'm a woman with a penis. This is rhetoric that is deeply, deeply insulting to thousands of American families, thousands more American families who lost people in the resulting wars, to tens of millions of families who supported Donald Trump as a presidential candidate, and to our country as a whole. People who say things like that should not be allowed to hold any position of influence in governments, in media, or in education, because we are down so bad. I have to compensate by taking things to the extreme because we are down so bad. I apologize, I don't mean to alarm anyone, I'm just negotiating, I have to call for them to be imprisoned so that the counter offer is just that they're not allowed to be teachers and politicians and stuff like that anymore. If you're that anti-American, then you should not be platformed or employed anywhere that receives tax dollars from American families. That makes sense to me. But back to the W thing, I really hated that speech he gave. The audacity of basically condemning the people who rallied behind you, who fought and died for your wars and for your father's wars, who defended you, to come out on the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and basically call them equal to the people who perpetrated the 9-11 attacks is just so purely dishonest and evil. That idea, it is so evil that that could only have spawned in a meeting in Washington, D.C. I really, I felt like syndrome watching that because, you know, George Bush has always been stupid, but he was charming, right? Like he would just say stupid things, it became a meme, you know, W became a meme. I remember I used to have a W tank top with a picture of him on it flipping the bird and the spirit of it was basically like, hell yeah, brother, W says these colors don't run. But then he comes out, he starts talking about our democracy and calling his former supporters foul spirited. And it's just me and my W tank top, like you can't trust anyone, especially your heroes. And it's so true, but the better lesson is just never trust anybody who is presently able to fraternize with those who you know to be your enemies. It really is that simple. Like there's a reason that Donald Trump is not in the club, but George Bush is. And his father was too before he went hot tub mode. So I guess the summary is that we should seriously be sounding the alarms right now because the rhetoric that is coming from our own governments on that day of all days too is so alarming. Like things really seem to be accelerating at a level that even I can't believe sometimes. You know, we always hear about the frog in the pan, right? This idea that over time the levels are going to just slowly increase in intensity intensity until before you know it, you're boiling to death. That's true in theory. I think that may have even been true a few decades ago, but now it's at a point where they have consolidated so much power, both in terms of absolute power and institutional representation, that now it seems to be more like, like frog in the blender, right? Where everything is just happening so fast that you don't even have time to react. You're basically just like, I think I might be in a blender right now. And then it turns on and it turns out you were right, but it happened so fast that you couldn't even do anything about it. 
I think that's a lot more accurate, at least now. But that being said, when we take power, which we will, because as we talked about in, I think, the last video, this system really is too incompetent and chaotic to ever be sustainable long term. And the things that they put in place to pacify and numb us into being oblivious to what they've done to our nation, widespread drug and alcohol abuse, pornography, obesity, mass media, consumerism, all of that is being abandoned, not in mass, but by lots of good people who realize that they effectively are weapons. And those are the people to whom George W. Bush and all of his gay friends are going to have to answer. They're going to have to answer to our guys, the guys that we put in charge of our very own Truth and Reconciliation Commission once the chips are down and eh, things are going to happen to them. Oh, what's that, George? You're worried? Hey, if you've got nothing to hide, you shouldn't be worried, right? Right, Patriot Act, George? I find your lack of trust in the plan disturbing, President Bush. He gets sent to a re-education camp in Duluth or Billings to learn about our great leader, Mike Lindell. He's in 23-hour lockdown, padded cell. The, the pads are made of my pillow material. They've got the logos and everything. I have no idea where this is going. I don't even know what this means. To be honest, I kind of checked out after we debuted the concept of transgender George Floyd with dementia, to be honest, but yeah. Just another day in the globalist American empire, right? Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so that you are notified when I post, and of course, share the video with a friend. Um, that's always important. Do you wanna hear my impression of, um, <laughs> you wanna hear my impression of Tom DeLonge uh, playing at a anti-secession concert to fundraise for anti-secession NGOs in 2025. He's going to go, this is hypothetically after Mark Hoppus survives cancer, which he will. We're all praying for him. And then uh, they they come back. They're playing with Matt Skiba as their fourth member. And he's going to go, this song's about America. It's called Stay Together for the Kids. That's how Tom DeLong talks. But anyways, thank you so much for what very few will understand that. That's very, that's very esoteric. You know, you really kind of have to know a few things to even understand what I'm talking about. I'm just going to keep, that's, that's the goal for the intro. Just keep talking until the only person who knows what I'm talking about is me. That's the goal. Just get that esoteric and then blame it on everyone else. I'm too smart. You don't get it because I'm too smart. It's not because I'm, I'm just, it's nonsense. It's just because you guys don't get it. You're not on my frequency. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof.